What is data lifecycle management and what does it mean for business? I'm Stefan Kloning, the founder of Raphael's Ambassadors and Norwegian uh, Data Management Bureau. And in this video, I will talk more about what data lifecycle management really is, the components of this, what it really means, and uh, the stages that data really, really are going through, and the processes it, uh, it are going through through its uh, existence in uh, in business. So in this, um, our, the topics I will go over here are the definition of uh, data lifecycle management to understand what DLM is and its primary objectives. We'll go over the phases of the data lifecycle, learn about the key phases from data creation to data destruction. We'll go over the best practices for each phase to discover practical tips for managing data effectively. We'll go through challenges in data lifecycle management to identify common challenges and solutions. And we'll go over some of the tools and technologies. So straight over to the definition of the data lifecycle management. So what is this? It's uh, defined as a comprehensive approach to managing data throughout its entire life cycle from creation and initial storage to the time it becomes obsolete and is deleted. So the primary objectives of DLM includes ensuring data integrity, enhancing security and optimizing cost management. So what it, we're actually talking about with data lifecycle management is that from data is created, actually coming into, ex, uh, coming into existence and to the point where the data is no longer needed and it may be deleted or phased out uh, in, in a sense, then uh, this, this is what we call the data lifecycle management. And this is really important to understand, especially for people dealing with, uh, with data, understanding the key phases in, in this process to, uh, to make sure that data is treated correctly in the, all, uh, in, in the right phases of, uh, uh, of, this, uh, of this process. And, uh, and and managing and managing their data data properly and actually gaining the value uh, that uh, that can be gotten from uh, from the data and uh, and operating uh, and operating uh, and operating it securely and in accordance with regulations and so on. So uh, uh, we've mentioned briefly about the objectives of uh, of DLM here with integrity, security and cost management. Uh, security naturally is important with cybersecurity, ensuring against leaks and so on. To also ensuring the right uh, cost. It can be very expensive if, uh, if you don't uh, manage your data correctly, if you have a lot of data. Uh, but uh, have have some messy systems, uh, so uh, to uh, to put it bluntly, then it can cause uh, cause some some issues with cost uh, cost management. So cost management, um, this part is really important as well. That we have uh, the fact that we have an understanding of the daily lifecycle management means that you may be able to save save money on uh, on this this process both getting more value from from your data and also not having to pay as much as you would otherwise if you do not uh, understand uh, or have someone who understands these these principles so uh, and of course data integrity ensuring that the data is accurate flowing uh, uh, flowing correctly to the right to the right places and uh, actually have have no kind of errors in uh, in the data flow between uh, between systems and so on so uh, this also plays a key role with um, in terms of uh, data governance and compliance as well plays an essential role for making sure that you have control of what data you have in your company and what you can do with the data and ensuring compliance if you have, for instance if there are regulation there are regulations like uh, for uh, like GDP, uh, GDPR, like personal uh, personal information, and uh, especially if there are health uh, uh, health information, like um, uh, U.S. regulations like HIPAA or uh, other uh, other similar uh, 
um, similar regulations in in uh, in your own country from um, for how to uh, how to manage health uh, health um, uh, personal health data and so on and and yeah so it plays a key role for data governance and compliance as well so what are the phases of the data life cycle so we mentioned that the data life cycle goes from the creation to the destruction so these are the kind of two endpoints that we're talking about and uh, here the creation is yeah how data is generated or collected so either it's created from the company itself so it's like for instance that when they when you get a sale it's created as a number in the uh, or created as numbers in your sales uh, sales tracking sy uh, system and so on maybe you have a uh, have a power bi or, or something some visualizer where you where it shows that you have made a, made a sale here maybe it's integrated to the to the bank or, and maybe in that case it's collected instead of actually generated in in your own um, in your own systems for instance here here is a case where it needs to be collected because in a sense that this uh, this information is gotten from the bank the bank has registered that okay here there is a transaction from this person to uh, to this this company for for making this this sale and then is also tracked in uh, the system in in the company either that it's integrated with the bank or that it's is managed otherwise in the accounting systems or sales system and so on uh, uh, of the uh, of the company so here that is a bit how the data is uh, generate uh, generated or or collected that this is how it comes into existence there's something that the company wants uh, an overview of uh, perhaps is something that is necessary for them to kind of keep track of what's going on in the business especially for accounting uh, accounting purposes and so on but also for uh, desirable information to have to track the performance of of the business as well what is going well what is not going so well and that is why the data is is created in in the first place and that here here is uh, born to uh, set up these kind of um, systems for, for for creating it so that can for instance be uh, transactions like like mentions or it can be sensors or or other things these kind of generate data it, it they create data and then maybe other other sources can collect them from from these uh, these sources if they want so and then we go over to uh, to storage uh, storage of uh, storage of data generally has there there are a lot of alternatives when it comes to uh, when it comes to storing uh, storing data and here it's also really important to choose the right tools to uh, uh, to store uh, to store your data because it can be especially when it comes to bigger volumes it uh, becomes really important to be to be scalable uh, and uh, to have uh, to have a system that allows you to uh, manage uh, properly manage and get insights and analyze these uh, these large data and that's where there's a large difference generally between many of the smaller companies and the bigger companies because the bigger companies generally can't use the same uh, the same alternatives that. Uh, that the smaller ones can or they can but it will be a lot more messy and uh, it's doesn't really pan out in the in the, in the long term uh, or work well out in the long term so there it's relevant to uh, to explore other other solutions for, for both the storage and the actual uh, management uh, when we're coming to um, to this bigger organization in general we're talking about much bigger platforms for for data like like cloud providers like yeah, Azure or uh, AWS or or similar to actually manage this uh, this level of of data having much more advanced pipelines having much more uh, thorough uh, data management systems and uh, uh, and so on to to actually store uh, to actually store the data as well. 
So uh, yes, that is that is a key part of, uh, of of storage. We need to store it someplace. Maybe you have local servers. Maybe you have the cloud. The cloud alternatives are as mentioned uh, here, especially if you want to have that scalability to scale up or scale down, pay what you use. Uh, then uh, then it's naturally naturally the case to uh, to use um, use cloud providers like that. But otherwise, it's uh, also possible to have it on local servers, but then you need to get more servers and so on to get more capacity. And that is a fixed cost. So, and then from storage, we go over to usage. And in usage, we're generally talking about analysis and decision making. So here we're talking about, for instance, okay, if you want a visual like a dashboard for, for your uh, in Power BI, for instance, okay, you have to gather, uh, you have to get the data from where it's stored. You have it uh, placed somewhere in, in your systems, and then you connect uh, this Power BI, uh, Power BI, for instance, to that data source, and then you can make some nice uh, visuals. You, may, you can make some nice dashboards to actually get a better understanding of uh, and insights of what is going on in the business based on that data. It's much more easy to under, uh, understand what is going on with such visuals that uh, then and analysis than just from the pure data itself. So, um, and here, here it has a significant connection to uh, decision making, uh, of course, to uh, the better and more clear insights you can get from what is going on in the business better decisions you can make uh, from that the better you see okay what is working what is not working then you can make good decisions based on that so i mentioned some examples of analytics or reporting tools uh, power bi is a really good one and another alternative is tableau so just uh, try uh, try out if if you are working in this uh, these fields just try them out see, see what you think i like power bi a lot at least but uh, yeah, you should be familiar with the different tools, especially if you're working in this field. And um, and yeah, so uh, and then we go from usage over to sharing or uh, sharing or dis uh, distribution, how data is shared internally or externally. And um, this is another extremely important point because here we're talking about access controls and so on here we're talking about okay we 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 limit the access uh, will uh, limit how available our data is so that uh, just these people who have a direct connection to, to this data who who sh would be supposed to see and uh, under uh, see and analyze uh, understand this data uh, should get access to it while other people don't don't get uh, don't get access to it for instance or it's just for one department that should view this and not other other department to make sure that the data stays internally for instance there may be inside information uh, or or so on uh, and or uh, generally in for information that would be sensitive if it would be leaked out uh, to uh, as, especially to the public but also perhaps to uh, to other departments uh, as well, it would be a larger risk uh, for the organization as a whole. So that would uh, that is a key uh, that that is key principle. How what principles and what uh, policies uh, do you have in place for how the data is shared both internally in your organization and externally? For instance, to suppliers, to customers, and and so on what do you want them to have access to and then it's possible to see okay how can you uh, give them access to something like that is it through an api is it through other uh, other alternatives but that is uh, that is basically what we're talking about when it comes to uh, sharing or distribution there's a lot we could go into there as well so here next step we're talking about the archiving so Generally, we're talking about uh, archiving when the data isn't really used much uh, anymore. We may archive. We, we may not have as um, it may not be accessed as, uh, as much anymore. We still want to have it available, 
but um, it's it's not really necessary. For instance, this and this is especially important for because uh, in a lot of cases for for accounting uh, purposes, for instance, it's legally mandated that you'll have to archive your data for a certain number of years. So you can, so you can't really delete it uh, right away after your uh, annual statement uh, is is published, even though. Um, uh, even though like the annual statement is provided, you have uh, had your uh, audit and, and so on, you still need to keep uh, the data, uh, the data for like the financial data in, in terms of what uh, the perform performance of the business, the actual numbers behind it. So that is a common, uh, a common cause of, um, uh, of archiving this case or just generally archiving old uh, old contracts, for instance, old contracts of uh, uh, legal binding binding contracts that may be out, uh, outdated, but you want to track the history of this customer, for instance, or a history with this supplier to understand, to have a better understanding of how it's developed over over time, perhaps, uh, and, and that could be a common. Um, that could also be a um, a reason to archive uh, your documents and not uh, just delete them right away. So uh, we'll also yeah as as mentioned uh, purposes of archiving generally is regulatory or uh, history for historical analysis and that's uh, that's some reason why we often want to keep um, want to archive uh, our data and not just delete it right away, uh, but. In uh, in some cases, we do want to delete uh, delete inform information. We do want to uh, delete data, especially when, uh, uh, especially in cases like uh, we've talked about with with the archiving. Uh, we, for for the rules surrounding accounting uh, accounting laws and so on, we often have to archive it for a specific number of years. So maybe five years. But then after the five years, then we're getting to the point where, okay, it's, it's not necessary to, to keep it anymore. Now we can now we can delete it according to the law, for instance. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then we have to have good, um, uh, good systems or protocols in place for, okay, how are, how are we going to do this? Uh, and how to make sure that we don't actually uh, just delete what is uh, what is supposed to be deleted and uh, not um, not delete anything that we're not supposed to do so uh, I, I think here here also it's important to have a good uh, good practices for for the data deletion process you should have good backup uh, backup in place and make sure that even if like that, you do something wrong in this in this step that you still have it um, available in in a sense that uh, you you start you start by doing doing this you see okay now now we've just no we've just removed the data data that we're supposed to remove here and uh, according to uh, our according to our, our protocols according to our to our policies okay this we don't need anymore okay we have archived this for a, for a long time or this may be uh, just redundant information irrelevant uh, irrelevant information that don't really bring any value it's not important so we don't really need it so but having systems like that uh, and having uh, having some routines that make sure that you only delete what you ha what you have to delete, and then making sure that all all copies are are deleted in a sense that, and especially if if you have uh, physical copies like you print it out on paper and so on that it goes through uh, like th that those documents are destroyed properly as well so that other people can't uh, can't get access access to it but. Yeah, it's it's really important to understand here with data data destruction that uh, and and data deletion to understand that the if you do something wrong with if there are documents that you sh and data that you should have that are actually important that if you delete there could be ethical legal uh, ethical and legal consequences for. 
uh, for that, that it could be really problematic. We've seen in many cases like that, both with companies and in, in politics, um, that people, uh, they didn't want people to find out about something they did, so they deleted their documents and so on, and, and that's not what we're, we're talking about here. We're talking about uh, what uh, the data that is no longer actually needed or used or relevant for uh, for the com uh, for the company or for uh, regulations uh, regulations or the government uh, either so that's why we have this process for for deletion so now we're going over to the best practices for each phase so j just um, go quickly through the through these we've already gone over 20 minutes here so here uh, from from in creation is is possible it's it's very important to keep in mind data quality from the start of the process because if you if data quality is something you take uh, account of only later it may just lead to much more work and uh, m much more work and money spent uh, spent in the long run so that's why Data, qual data quality is, is so important because it ensures that when you create uh, the data, when you create uh, that this system, this actually comes into place, that it is correct, uh, that is correct, that it uh, is uh, is complete, that it doesn't have, will have any errors. You make sure that from the beginning, when you actually start to uh, start to get these uh, get it, these systems up for uh, for your data uh, data life cycle uh, data life cycle management that you make sure that when you when you have transactions that it is accurate uh, it provides accurate information about the transactions and that it flows properly to your uh, accounting system and, and so on everything else that you want to do so making sure that all the data that is created is accurate in terms of the what is actually happening out in the world that the data matches reality uh, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about emphasizing data quality from the start and then the storage uh, here as mentioned really important to uh, choose the right storage uh, storage solution look based on your own situation your uh, your own data needs your own as a need for scalability how much how much data you have how much data you're going to get for forward what kind of uh, uh, fee, uh, functionalities features you you need you need to actually manage the type of data that you have correctly and uh, and so on and uh, for the usage it's important to have uh, a responsible data usage and consider also the ethical implications of using uh, using some some data here here is also uh, so especially in terms of the reg uh, the regulations here making sure you're in, in compliance making sure that you're making all the right uh, cons considerations and taking into account maybe if especially if there are maybe gray areas of of these kind of data uh, data related uh, laws that you're making sure to uh, to be careful in a, in a sense but also that you are um, you're having these things in mind while you're working on uh, on your data and you and actually using them in in practice so uh, and for the archiving it's important to set, uh, set strategies for efficient archiving and uh, and future retrieval here it's also relevant to uh, to explore what solutions are are available it probably depend a lot on your situation a lot on your um, a lot on your size and so on so um, so yeah and uh, the for the direction uh, yeah for for complete uh, for complete data removal you might want to make sure to have uh, have the right uh, right steps. Uh, follow the right steps in the in the process to make sure that you have uh, that that you don't uh, that you don't delete anything you're not supposed to delete that you have kind of isolated the data that you're going to delete you have good reasons to to delete it you are sure that 
this will not be of, of relevance or importance either to the company or uh, or the government or like regulatory agencies forward and so on before you actually go on to uh, to delete it uh, from the system so now we go over to the part with challenges in data lifecycle management there are there are a lot of issues with uh, with this on a lot of it come often comes down to uh, human errors at least in my experience so and uh, what i mean by human errors is generally the 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 process the tasks uh, and the work that are done by humans during the during this uh, data life cycle management is often that when when we're trying to make changes uh, make changes to data for instance change the uh, change the format or change to uh, when we're making a customer report or for instance that it's very easy to um, to miss something or to uh, to make uh, like where without realizing actually making some uh, making some mistakes in, in what we're what we're doing and that is uh, that is that's why autom automation is uh, making so so much kind of value creation right right now because it avoids a lot of those uh, those issues with uh, with this and allows uh, and it allows us it allows workers and businesses to uh, to have more secure data data lifecycle ma uh, management uh, management in general throughout this uh, this cycle. By avoiding a lot of the uh, avoiding a lot of the challenge or mi minimizing a lot of the challenges involved here, and uh, and yeah, so that is often the reason that the data quality and integrity aren't very good. It's like it's not emphasized with uh, with data quality integrity in the beginning. It's not ensured that the right protocols, routines are in place. Maybe like they are not very kind of active with finding better solutions with automation and so on for establishing these types of things and there may be data si silos challenges with integrating data between systems so that those who need and should have access to the data don't get access to it even though they should and so on that can be a really big problem as well and then it uh, and then it's also compliance with regulations like GDPR for like personal information, health information, and so on, how you're supposed to manage that, that uh, can be a challenge as well for for many businesses. So, uh, so yeah, those uh, following the best practices here uh, generally provides you a lot, makes you a lot more secure when it comes to uh, to dealing with a lot of these challenges. So I'll go briefly over some tools and technologies as well that affect. Um, the that can maybe be um, uh, be of help in the uh, data lifecycle management. Uh, just for the record, I, I don't uh, I don't want to say I endorse any of these tools. Uh, they are purely meant as uh, education and uh, um, and alternatives to check out if they are relevant for your situation. So uh, it, just uh, just check them out. But uh, if if you want a more custom a kind of rec recommendation for your situation i would rather take that in a call uh in a call but be sure to check uh, check them out and consider if those are relevant for for your situation so for instance we have uh, uh for data management software we have for instance informatica and ibm watson we uh, for backup and archiving solutions there are alternatives like uh, vm and convault and for data governance framework and compliance tools, there are a lot of uh, alternatives like Calibra for uh, data governance and cataloging, Talent for data integration and governance solutions. We have Alation for data cataloging and governance. We have OneTrust, which helps with privacy, security and compliance. And we have Big ID, which provides data discovery and intelligence for privacy, protection and perspective. So I'll wrap this up here. It's been up to 30 minutes of all about the data lifecycle management. So it's been a been a quite a quite technical uh, technical episode, right here. I um, 
uh, I would recommend you go to a bit less less technical video, uh, checking out the top top three uh, technologies to improve your business in uh, in in today's world. Check check out that video next. But uh, to conclude, this has been a video all about the each step in the li data lifecycle management, what it means for for businesses, and how you can make sure your data uh, data from start to finish is uh, provide is uh, is secure accurate and and flows flow secure or are kind of solid about uh, the way that your data is managed in in your company you can also check out the video with um, i made about data the key components to data processing the five key components to data processing is kind of related to uh, to this topic so if you want uh, to learn more about this be sure to check that out otherwise uh, if if you found this video valuable uh, be sure to like and subscribe be sure to comment below what you thought was uh, was this useful was this not useful was there something that could be done uh, done better and so on be sure to comment uh, down below uh, what you think and maybe what you would like to see more of uh, more of content uh, like uh, if, if you want to see more uh, more content like this or something else in in the future and uh, as always if you want uh, some some help some advice generally on uh, either data management ai automation or anything i offer free 30 minutes uh, consultation calls uh, so the link to that will be in the description uh, below as well but other than that i wish you an amazing uh, amazing day forward and uh, and i will see you all in the next video